Hey everyone, I'm Aaron Wing Marine. Welcome back to the channel and my next Escape from Tarkov video. We're going to do a quick and abbreviated economy loot guide update, if you will. Uh, we're late wipe. Uh, we're starting to get that tail end of the economy. And the changes BSG has been making to the Bitcoin and the related farm has only amplified that. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. All right, so what I mean by tail end of the uh, the wipe economy is that we're seeing a lot of the items become basically worthless. Things that low-level players need and people need for their hideouts just aren't needed for anything else. People aren't bartering anymore. They're just buying everything they need off the flea market. So because of that and combine that with fewer and fewer players playing, uh, you're going to see a very specific trend happen. And that is items that get used a lot by players uh, in the end game when they're just PVPing and that's all they're really doing. You know, things like gunpowders and bullets and weapons and armor. That stuff's going to keep getting a little bit more expensive and hold its value. But other things like spark plugs or, you know, some of the tapes and things like that, you're just going to see them get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until eventually they're just not worth keeping. Now, if BSG tweaks some barters or they make some other changes to the game, you will see an impact in the economy. But the impacts are going to be a lot less drastic. So because of that, we're going to kind of shift these videos a little bit. They're not going to be as nearly in depth. Uh, they're going to be shorter and more concise. I'm really just going to talk about the stuff that changes from time to time. If you're looking for more of a beginner loot guide, go check out this video here. Uh, it will be a lot better at explaining items to pick up if you're a new player. It'll be outdated, but the, the principles will stay the same and it'll be a good guide for you. So let's jump into the changes. The big one that actually led me to want to do a video like this uh, was the green batteries. Uh, now, these are always been worth keeping, but we've seen them come back up in price quite a bit and hold that price instead of just spiking. Now, this is a product of BSG making changes to the barter for the Bitcoin. Uh, the maximum amount per cycle now is 800. So we're gonna keep seeing green batteries tick up, and I think we're even gonna see Tetrises start to tick up again, which is a good thing for anybody who's been saving them. Now, the Tetrises are starting to spike into the mid 90s and higher. So instead of just selling them to the vendor when you find them, they might actually be worth selling on the flea market now. So just check them before you sell them, make sure that that's the route you wanna go. Another one is G phones. Now this is a product of everybody switching from making graphics cards to other things in the Intel center. So G phones are used a lot to make uh, thumb drives and VPXs, which is pretty much where everybody shifted to crafting and it burns a lot of those up. So instead of these things being worth the 11, 12K they were for a long time, we're seeing them push 20, 25K. And there is a really big spike right now for them, but I don't know if that's gonna hold. Nonetheless, check the flea market. These things are a great thing to sell. Now, paper had this pullback and it pulled all the way back into the low 20s, um, 2025. And with the flea market fee, I was afraid these things were gonna go back into the trash pile were of no loot items, but we've seen them recover, which is great. So pick these up, but make sure, especially if you don't have a level three Intel center, you're selling them for over 35K because the flea market fee is kind of high on these, but it's still worth picking them up and selling them. Uh, another thing is squash. Pretty much it's the only food that I pick up now. Sometimes if I have empty slots, I'll pick up herrings or other things, but squash is the only thing that's really maintained value as far as the food's concerned, with the exception of things like sugar and chocolate, of course. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, squash. Squash is pretty much it right now. Now, another thing I kind of want to give a little bit more detail here is weapon parts. Anything that players need to make meta weapons, but is gate kept behind like a level four trader, especially mechanic, those parts are going to be worth a ton of money. So one of the big examples I like talking about is the AK build. The 103 build is the meta build now. And you use the Troy combo handguard. Well, all that's cheap and dandy. You can get that cheap off the flea market. What you can't get cheap is the two rails, the 3.2 inch and the 4.2 inch. These things are insanely expensive. Like there's only one for sale now for 75,000 of the 4.2 and the 3.2 is probably in the 30K range, 40K range. Uh, because these are both level four mechanic items. And if people want to build a meta AK-103, that's what they're going to do. And with all the money in the game, people are just going to buy them. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for those. The QARS, QARS, four inch or three inch, they're both worth a small fortune. On top of this, things like uh, the the hand grips, the sorry, the four grips. If you find a shift, an RK-1, either one of the RK-1s or any of these AFG M lock, specifically the M lock uh, hand guards or hand grip, four, four grips, wow. Any of those, it's a great one slot item to get out or raid with. Now, I want to bring this up for folks that might not know it. So you have these two AFG kind of these Magpul grips, right? And essentially they're the same grip. Uh, the difference is, the big difference is, is this one attaches directly to the Magpul stuff. 
this one attaches to rails. So that's what you got to look for, specifically the M-Lock. If you see M-Lock, it's a good thing to keep. When it comes to pistol grips, pretty much anything that's got plus 10 ergo on it, you know, if it's plus 10, 11, 12, that's what you want to keep. Some stuff's higher. That's a good way to sort through what's not, what's worth and what's not. Now, there's some lower than that that are worth more just because you use them for tasks. But specifically, a plus 10 ergo pistol grip is a great thing to keep and sell on the flea market. Now, suppressors are another thing I just want to make a quick mention on. If you find a suppressor, you're better off keeping it. Just do it because less than half of them are not worth keeping. So your odds, if you find them, are pretty good to keep them. But just for argument's sake, uh, we'll, we'll talk about them here in a little bit more detail. I have Tarkov Markets site up because it's a great way to look through a lot of them. Your top four big ones are the Ultra 5, the SDN6, the Rotex 2, and the Hybrid 46. These are all the best suppressors in the game. So if you see those, pick them up for sure. And you have to get all the way down to the bottom of the list before you start finding ones that are not worth keeping. And basically, it's anything that's a pistol or uh, basically a pistol suppressor or the Ash-12 suppressor. Those are just not worth keeping with the exception of like this, uh, the FD-917 FD and the Osprey, obviously. The rest of those are pretty much not worth keeping if they're pistol. That's how you sort them. But again, if you're not sure exactly what to keep and what not to keep, just keep the suppressors odds are it's probably going to be worth the money. On to a few items that have been crushed lately and are just not worth picking up anymore. Starting off with Kite Gunpowder, uh, Ram, I don't have one here, I should have grabbed one, but Ram Sticks, they're just not worth keeping anymore. Hoses, PSUs, uh, all of the fabrics, um, even Ripstop anymore. I won't even pick this up just because it's hard to sometimes sell it. We're, it's the middle of the night right now, it's, it's 1 a.m. when I'm, I'm doing this, so you're seeing the price is kind of high. Uh, but I don't like waiting on these things, so I just don't even pick up fabrics anymore. Um, and then my favorite, Tarcoal and Herring. These are two of my favorite foods throughout most of the wipe. But fewer and fewer people are bartering for the Holodilinics now, or Holodinks as I call them. Uh, so they've just, you've seen them come down in price. You might still be able to scratch out that 12 to 13k range with them, but most of the time they're under 10. So I would just stay away from those for now as well as most of the foods. Uh, like I said, the only thing I'm picking up anymore is squashes when it comes to canned foods. So that pretty much wraps up this quick guide. Uh, I hope it's still helpful. Um, and I'll, I'll keep an eye out for any other crazy changes, things with barters and stuff like that, and try to keep you guys posted. But good luck in your raids, and we'll see you in Tarkov. Well, that wraps up the video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button because it helps out the channel a bunch. And subscribe for future content. We also have a Discord, links down in the description, that you can come join. We're filling up with a bunch of chill people who just love to play Tarkov. If you're looking to support the channel in other ways, we've launched a Patreon with some benefits like access to a Discord channel, a constantly updated spreadsheet for my hideout calculations, and some other things if you want to go check it out over there. Lastly, thanks for your support on YouTube. It means the world to me and I greatly appreciate every one of you. So with that, we'll wrap it up up and we'll see you in Tarkov.